Hey, how's it going, everybody? Jamie McDonald here, and this is episode 23, and it was supposed to be It's Lonely in Here because I was going to be yeah. by myself <laughs> because uh, Mike is supposed to be on the other side of the country on business, and actually he is on the other side of the country on business, but he managed to squeak out a few extra minutes for us to be on the show. So welcome, Mike. How's it going out there in Cali? Yeah. It's great. It's great. Beautiful, it's beautiful San Diego. Can't uh, can't be better. And it's like you said, it's getting really hot here too. When it's ninety in San Diego, it's it's really hot. Holy cow! <laughs> but know? so it's uh, it's beautiful. You know, I'm on the coast, and as soon as I uh, got a few minutes here, as soon as I get off, I'll probably go out and get something to eat, and then you know hit La Jolla and check out, uh, probably get some sights. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a yeah. terrible, terrible business trip. How yeah, it manage? is. It's tough. <laughs> <laughs> I've been working cool. all day though. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, I kind of alluded to the fact that, well, when I thought I was doing this solo to yeah. fill a half hour, I was just going to kind of review some of the stuff that, um, that I've been using. That's not necessarily a camera or lens body there's a lot of accessories that i know you and i both use and carry with us everywhere we go to to do what we do and um so that's what i'm gonna do when you bail out of here but i know okay you have something to talk about as well that kind of falls in line with what i'm planning on doing a little bit later so you want to talk about that yeah yeah definitely um so i'm we're out working with uh with hunt's photo and exactly where are they out of what so hunts is out? east coast they're east coast they're uh they're east like coast, a, right? uh, i did an event for them in boston last year right. so they are the major player aside from you know like bnh or something like that um all along the east coast great store right yeah great store and uh, in fact i've ordered stuff from them i ordered uh, the original from hunts because they had it in stock first before anybody else nice so i, I remember getting that but but we're doing starting to do some reviews. I've got them holding it here. Got the uh, Manfrotto B free with me, and and this is a great uh, travel trip. So I figured I'd take it along. It's a carbon fiber tripod, and this thing is crazy light. I mean, I shoot with the Me Photo most of the time, um, but I'm excited. I'll get that out tonight on the shore, and or I guess we'll call it the coast shores on the other side of the country. <laughs> um, but. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how it works, but it, I used a little bit over the weekend when I was up in Port Huron, and it's it's really nice. I can't believe how light that thing is. So awesome. It's, uh, it's going to be a good route. So we'll, we'll put out some reviews on that, and, and I know as we continue to work with it, we'll get different items to talk about and probably won't have anything to do with Olympus cameras, I don't think ever, actually. Right, yeah, I These think a lot of the stuff that we cool. review for hunts will definitely probably be the accessory type things. And I know right. um, we're also – probably in the pretty close future here, we'll be able to give out some sort of a promo code for you guys as well. So that if, right. if you like what you see and you want to order from hunts, whether it's that product or something else, because hunts carries like everything. I mean, I'm looking at printers yeah. with them and uh Wacom tablet and things yeah. like that. So uh cool store to work with. I mean, they're straight photographer, you know, run and owned and oh, yeah. operated. So, uh, so that tripod, Mike, um, so yeah. we both carry the Mi Photos. I've got one right, right. here actually behind me. So compared to this thing, uh, yeah, how would you say it rates? This is like the road trip. I think this is probably the one you bring right, out that's with the you. Right, that is. That's the one I normally carry. It's probably about an inch shorter folded. Cool. I'm holding it here folded. About an inch shorter folded, and it's got some really awesome things, the way it folds together. I don't want to hit myself in the face with it, <laughs> but – it, it's got indentations in the head so that when these legs go down, it's extremely tight. Nice. So where the me photo, sometimes, you know, the head, you got to turn it and spin oh, yeah. it. And it it's yeah. a little wide. It ends up being like that, and it's hard to get in your bag. This thing gets so tight and compact. Uh, as far as throwing it in your, you know, your suitcase, it was fantastic. Um, of course, it's got a really cool bag, too, nice. which is not yep. nice. <laughs> but uh, – yeah, I, and I think the you know that and the strength of the legs um, so far from what I'm finding, uh, it hasn't been in real windy conditions yet. So uh, I will see what tonight might bring on, on the coast. There's going to be, you know, there'll probably be some windy conditions out there right. uh, tonight. And we'll see, see what that looks like. But I really like the, the carbon fiber. I, I was surprised at how much lighter it feels. Yeah, that's um, what I was wondering. You know, it's a little more expensive for sure, right? Um, but you know, I mean, you it, you really feel like you could go stand in water and 
you know, put this thing in, in, uh, you know, stand it in water and it's got some, I really like the way it, uh, adjust the, you know, the way it stands. It's, it's pretty different. It's got these, it's hard to, it's hard to really show here, but you see just the three different ways it stands. You just flip these switches oh, cool. and, and it just, you know, as far as it's standing at a normal tripod or really low. So yeah, nice. it's a cool, I'll, I'll have a, I'll have a good write up on it probably sometime in the next week or so. And, yeah. uh, and then we'll get another item to review. Yep. So um, I guess for traveling, that's probably perfect. You know, uh, what, 50 pounds yeah. is about, I think, what almost all the airlines are at for, like, your check bag. Oh, you know, yeah. Having to pay yeah, extra plus or whatever, you know. Or, or like, what I'm going to be doing this week, and I'm going to be hiking out in the sand dunes, you know. Uh, it's like a three-mile hike through yep. the dunes to get to Lake Michigan. And carrying the aluminum tripod, I'm, gra I'm glad it's a really small tripod, but I'm thinking that uh, – three miles through the sand and 90 degree heat i'm gonna want mm -hmm. every single ounce <laughs> of uh, weight saved that i can you know hiking through the dunes. and i think but, that's exactly that's exactly what that's for is when you're looking to cut ounces right I think you go that carbon fiber route i think your your strength and everything is comparable probably from what i can feel oh yeah but boy if you're going to cut ounces that's that's a great way to go right a real great way to go definitely cool so um yeah. We were talking earlier before the show about shooting the Perseid meteor shower. Uh, is that something yeah. you're thinking about doing? I know it's funny. I kind of wanted to just yeah. mention what we were speaking about before the show. And that's, um, <laughs> you know, for those of us with the Olympus cameras, we're doing a lot of live composites so we can get those, you know, wicked cool star trails. Um, and mm -hmm. it's funny because I get kind of irritated if I'm running like a mm -hmm. 30 or 40 minute or longer exposure to get these awesome, like, rotated stars and then a jet comes through and leaves a streak or a satellite <laughs> goes whizzing by and i've got this beautiful round concentric rings of stars with a line through it and then here i'm contemplating yeah. waking up like two hours or an hour and a half early to go out and get an image <laughs> that is star trails full of lines going through it it's just it's funny that, uh, <laughs> like, the, like the yeah yeah the ocd in me that hates those extra lines is actually considering going out and doing this but um i know is yeah, that I something you're thinking you, about yeah. trying or yeah i think I, I, we'll see we'll see how it goes because <laughs> i gotta get up and drive uh you know for work to get out out to a couple of our places so we'll see you know if getting up at 4 a.m and then you know, having to put on work clothes and <laughs> yeah. be on the beach is a little bit odd. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see. And like you said, I, I just despise those same lines going through and you're trying to shoot even a night shot in a city. Yeah. And even oh, if yeah. you're doing uh, car streaks, you get that one single line of that jet going through. I mean, we ran into that in Chicago a lot. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. sometimes they're cool because they got a, they got a curve. Yeah. It's got well, a I mean, cool thing. you know, you've got one. I think it but was in Philly, you know, that you shot. You know, was a great yeah. example of how it works. Yeah, it's it's really cool, really interesting in the scene. Yeah. But if you're primarily right. shooting the sky, then yeah, those lines. I don't know. I'm half yeah. debating just letting everybody else on the internet shoot it, you know, and then I'll just enjoy what they uh -huh. shoot and not have that in the back of my mind <laughs> wanting to erase lines from my shot. <laughs> but um, so yeah, as far as uh, that goes, uh, I guess we'll we'll see. Um, and I know your time's limited. So do you want to talk about any events yeah. or anything that you've got coming up? I know you've got something coming yeah, up. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I've got a couple quick things. Uh, first, this weekend, we've got the Woodward Dream Cruise. Um, myself and a few photographers are already set up coming in. We're going to do a little challenge. It's uh, it's not a real workshop. We're all going to get together and just shoot. And uh, I'm going to hand out some challenges for different kinds of themes. But uh, us and 1.5 million people will be there. Um, <laughs> The Woodward Dream Cruise is the largest auto, auto dream cruise in in the uh, really in the world, I think. Yeah. Um, but it it will be a lot of fun, and if if you've ever done if you've ever uh, haven't done it, let's say check it out online at Woodward Dream Cruise. It's an amazing event, and people from definitely from out here in San Diego, actually all over the world, will ship in their cars to drive in it. So it it is uh, it's going to be busy. It's going to be wild. It's busy, and I. Pretty sure we'll find some characters there oh, yeah. out of a you know a million and a half people. So that'll be a fun day. And then the next week, I'm talking for Olympus. Uh, I think we're both doing the same thing. Uh, I happen to be in Toronto. You're in Ann Arbor that week. Um, and I'm going to be doing that. I've got a workshop. Still a couple spots open on the workshop. 
if anybody wants to get in and can get into Toronto, we're going to do some street shooting. And then we've, we've got a uh, old car graveyard for Sunday, which is going to be fantastic, an old junkyard. So that'll be a lot of fun. Um, and let's see what else we got. Uh, well, I think we got a big show coming up next, uh, our next show too. Yeah. If so I remember right. Yeah. We've the got next... a pretty big show. I'm sure you'll talk more about it, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, so we've got a, we've got a, We've got a birthday coming up. <laughs> yeah. One year old birthday. How cool is that? <laughs> right. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So, um, exactly. But yeah, that's what's going on. Cool. Very cool. So I guess what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump over and I'm going to share a few photos. You know, it's been a, it's been a couple of episodes since we've shared photos. So I didn't know how far back to go in these. I didn't want to go too far back. I like to try to keep everything as recent as I can, but I will uh, share that right there. So, um, yeah. you know, we live in Michigan and you know, the go-to spot, I think in my mind, uh, in the summer is the Lake Michigan shoreline, uh, the beach as we call it, whatever. Um, so this is uh, taken in Muskegon at uh, Duck Lake State Park. Uh, just right behind the, the beach there, there are huge, huge sand dunes. I think that, well, I say huge, they're pretty big. I think they're, I think they're about 150 feet up, you know, a vertical. So they're really tall. And I just wanted to get a shot of my kids running down the dunes and I considered doing it with like the 12 to 40. I had the 12 to 40 uh, in my bag with me and I had the seven to 14 on and I had been shooting just like these big wide sweeping shots of the dunes. And I thought, you know, maybe I'll just keep the seven to 14 on and just track them as they run down and shoot this. So I could keep that, that big spacious feel because the dunes really are big there. So just kind of compose this shot, you know, keeping that in mind and using the grass that's in the foreground. Uh, to kind of guide your eye down to where my kids were at. I had it in the slower burst mode so that it wasn't, you know, quite rifling through like an entire card's worth of photos, but ended up keeping this photo right here because they kind of got close to that intersect point where the, the grass is leading you right towards them. And just typical summer day in Michigan, you know, it's phenomenal to go to the beach and just have a day like that. Uh, this was taken two days ago. It's funny, I don't... I don't really shoot sunsets a whole lot anymore lately. It seems like family life just keeps you so busy. It's it's kind of hard to get out. But I told my family I'd run and pick up ice cream for everybody, a little treat after dinner. And me and my uh, my youngest son, we walked out of the ice cream parlor, carrying the ice cream back to the car, and the sky was just phenomenal. I thought, oh, my gosh, I need to get out and get the sunset. So we hurried up and got home, dropped off the ice cream, and I took off out into the countryside. And... I like shooting the landscape photos every once in a while if I've got a great sky full of interest um, with a telephoto lens. So that way I can kind of crank in on the clouds because to me, you know, that's obviously the focal point of this. But I wanted to leave some foreground in it. And I think by using that compression that you get with the telephoto lens, it just makes everything seem larger than life. Uh, it just puts the clouds like right up in your face. And I kind of was really digging this one because it almost has a Michigan mitten kind of feel to that cloud in the center with the sun behind it. Uh, the next shot is actually about five or six minutes before that sunset shot, uh, which is kind of crazy to believe the sunset shot was facing west. This is turning around and facing uh, southeast. And the cloud that you see there that's kind of sweeping towards the foreground, it has like a really wispy feel to it. That is the cloud that I actually saw that made me decide to drive out into the sunset. I chased that out there uh, because on the right-hand side of the cloud, it's kind of hard to see, but there are these little dimples hanging down from the clouds. Um, there's some right here. I don't know if my pointer shows up there. And over here, um, those are, they're called mammatus clouds when it's just a cloud full of those. And that's what it was when we came out of the ice cream parlor. And by the time I got the ice cream dropped off at home and made it out there to shoot. The cloud had kind of opened up and the mammatus formations started to disappear, but still just a, a stunning sweeping sky. And I'm all about the sky. <laughs> uh, and this was a day later. It was a rainy day on my way home from work and, or just two days ago, sorry. Um, rainy and just kind of nasty when I was coming home. And I thought, man, just the light is really great. And I knew this spot where there are all these uh, thistle plants growing. And 
I've driven past it a few times and I always notice that there are a bunch of goldfinches in the area. And I thought, man, it would be so cool if I could get a photo of a goldfinch sitting in the thistles. And <laughs> luck has it, you know, that I got kind of lucky and saw one. It's kind of hard to see, you know, doing through a screen share, but up close, this photo is just ridiculously razor sharp. And it was taken with the 75 to 300, which I haven't shot with since I got the 40 to 150 a whole lot. And I was thinking, you know, uh, when I went to work that I wanted to take a longer lens just so that I could maybe capture some wildlife on the way home. And I was pretty stoked to uh, have that long of a lens with me so that I could just, I literally just sat in my car on the side of the road and shot about 30 photos of these finches playing. And uh, yeah, I was pretty excited to have that work that way. That's pretty cool. So that's I do like that. Kind of, kind of what I've been shooting lately. <laughs> it's just yeah. my typical landscape and wildlife. Um, but yeah, now I'm kind of hooked on having the 75 to 300 back in the bag. That extra reach is like it's golden. I have a photo too that I didn't put on here, but I think I might have shared it online in a few places. If not, I'll put it out tonight. But when I was in that area shooting the birds, there were cows on the opposite side of the road and I was watching these cows and there's this cow that's just sitting in the grass, just staring at me and it moved its head a little bit. And I noticed there was a bird sitting on his forehead. So, uh, so I had to get a photo of that and he was far enough away to where the 40 to 150 wouldn't have done it unless I had cropped in a whole bunch. So again, glad I had that 75 to 300 in the bag and I got a couple of really good shots of the, uh, the bird brain cow. Yeah, I, I saw that cow. <laughs> I, I, I laughed. I said, where the heck did you find that? <laughs> right. It was kind of a goofy That's scene. Just, crazy. just yeah, one of those things where you're glad you have a camera. And, you know, and I shared that photo, right. I think, maybe on Facebook. And I don't know if too many yeah. people noticed that there was a bird on his face or not. But, uh, yeah. So, yeah. That's you know. pretty cool. No, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, hey, I'm going to – I have to roll out. Um, All right. So, I heard a buzzer yeah. back there. So, I guess your, yeah. uh, your time is up. Yeah. <laughs> it is. So I'm going to uh, take off. I appreciate being able to get on. I yeah. really look forward to uh, our next show. That's going to be a blast, you know, celebrating a one year anniversary there. Definitely. Um, and uh, Everybody have a great week and I will, uh, Jamie, I'll talk to you soon, man. All right. Thanks for tuning in, Mike. Safe travels. All right. See you. All right, All right. Bye. Bye. Now I'm just by myself. What am I going to do? So I think what I'm going to do is what I planned on doing originally. Although, thank God Mike swung in because I don't know if I have a half hour's worth of content here or not. But So I'll just talk about a few products that um, that seem to always be with me. Uh, and some of them are newer to me and some of them are not so new. But I'll just talk about them anyways. I'll talk about probably like the newest thing that I've gotten. Um, so I was a big fan of the Peak Design Capture Clip. Loved it. You know, it was cool to... Just be able to slap your camera on and just have it there. It had a few things about it that I didn't like. And um, this company reached out to me recently. Uh, B Grip is the name of the company. And they make this thing called the Uno. And it's a lot like the capture clip. It's the same basic concept. So here it is in the packaging. But you can see that it's significantly larger than the capture clip is. Um, and I'll show you this outside of the packaging as well. I just wanted to show the, the product packaging. It's, again, very, 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 very similar to what the Peak Design is, but they've addressed the one thing that I didn't really care for with the Peak Design, and that was, um, and I'm not going to be able to put my backpack on when I'm doing this, but when I have the Peak Design on, the camera would always want to, like, fall forward. And the way that this B-Clip Uno is designed, it's set up so that it attaches way up here at the top, you can see right here, I've got these little uh, set screw type things that that are what tighten it down to your strap. But then it's got like this extended base plate right here. And what that does and when you're wearing it is it holds the camera up so it doesn't like tip forward. And I know that's just kind of a nitpicky sounding thing, but you'll understand if you're wearing a backpack and now it's got the strap like pulled out from you. It's just not a very... Um, it's not that it's just, aside from it being unsightly and just looking kind of weird, it's not comfortable to have it tugging on your strap. And wearing this, I wore this yesterday uh, just to, to really put it through its pace. I kind of jogged around with it a little bit behind my house. It's super well, and it balances out everything, like, way better than the Peak Design did. So 
Uh, big fan of this. The locking mechanism is quite a bit different than the Peak Design as well. Peak Design just has like this single button that you push in on it, and then your camera pops out. And um, it works great. It's fine. I didn't have any problems with that. But you had to like adjust this little like um, like a tension knob. And if you forgot, if you had loosened it up just so that it was easier to get your camera in and out of the capture clip, or if it had worked itself loose, which I actually had that happen. I'm not sure how it did, but it did. Um, your capture clip could come like very loose. And I had my, my camera on the verge of coming out and just happened to reach down to grab it and go to push the button and I just pulled my camera right off the plate. And I'm like, holy crap, like I was seconds away from dropping it. But this Uno does something completely different. It's got this locking type mechanism. And I know the capture clip I think had a lock on it as well, but I never used it because I don't know, it just wasn't user intuitive, I guess. Whereas this one's like this big bright red lock. You just lift it up and it's unlocked. And then you've got this locking cam right here. So the camera is like totally like locked in when that stuff's engaged. And when it's not, you know, it comes out. The plate is quite a bit different than the, the one on the capture clip as far as the materials used in it. So they use this really high density polymer. They name what the polymer is on their website. And I did some research on it just to see if, um, you know, cause I'm trying to be thorough about this. I wanted to make sure that it wasn't just some, I'll just, I'll use the term like I was thinking it. I just want to make sure it wasn't BS, just some jargon bull crap just to help sell a product. So I did research on it and it actually is a uh, very, very high strength uh, composite material. So, uh, lighter than metal. This is lighter than the capture clip the for the most part and uh, I'm thinking probably almost as strong, maybe not quite as strong as the, the aluminum that the capture clip was made out of, but definitely strong and it's held up to, this is the 75 to 300 and this is what I had on it when I was, I took a little jog around the block and out in my yard just to, to put it through its paces and never had any problems with it. It didn't wear or ding or have any issues so uh, this is the the B Grip Uno, and it's designed specifically for the smaller cameras. Anyways, it's rated to hold up to five kilograms, so uh, it has no problem holding an OMD. And this, I put the forty to one fifty f two point eight. Uh, I don't know where that's at. Uh, <laughs> on my EM one, and mounted it. I put the the uh, locking plate on the on the foot for the lens. This is this is a it's a heavier combo. It's probably about as heavy as it gets with the micro four thirds and it held it up just fine. Uh, and I had very, very little of the sagging that I would normally have just with like an OMD with the capture clip. So bravo to Uno. And you know, like always, there'll be a link to their product uh, in the show description after the show airs. So that was kind of the first thing that I wanted to talk about was the, the B Grip Uno. Uh, I without a doubt will recommend that. Uh, and like Mike said, the next show is going to be our one-year anniversary, and I'm going to give away one of those B-Grip Unos, and we might have some other stuff to give away as well, but that's definitely something that I'm going to be giving away, so tune in for that one. Um, the next thing that I wanted to talk about, and initially, it's funny, I did a review or an unboxing or something of an Olympus product a while ago, and at the time, I had a uh, Pro Dot shutter release on the camera and I've got one here on my on my pen EP5 so it's this little red dot right it's this squishy silicone nubby thing and it's funny because I don't remember what product I was reviewing or talking about but I had more questions about the damn dot than I did about the camera or lens that I was reviewing literally hundreds and hundreds of questions and I gave links to it on Amazon and I think that through the link that, that I provided to that product, I think there have been uh, 150 some odd of them sold. So it's popular to have these little soft shutter releases. And I liked it. Actually, I still like it. It's awesome uh, shutter release, soft shutter release button. But it's silicone. It's rubber. It's just kind of, eh. you know, it was cool. It introduced me to soft release buttons. Um, but I wanted something a little fancier I guess and I looked around at a few different companies and the one I ended up settling on is low lumina well, let me go the other way there we go everything's backwards in these uh, cameras so low lumina makes a product very similar to the pro dot except instead of it being 
like that rubbery silicone plasticky stuff. It's actually anodized aluminum. And my favorite color is green. So if anybody wants to buy me a shirt, buy me a green one. Um, so I went with green. It's a green anodized soft release button. And the way this attaches is it's uh, two pieces, actually three. There is this little tiny base, and it's tiny because your shutter is small, so bear with me. It's this little itty-bitty. Of course, I drop it. <laughs> it's this little itty-bitty base plate, okay, that's got a crazy strong 3M adhesive on the back of it. And then it's threaded right there, and that's where the soft, you know, where the green shutter release button screws onto. But you can see at the bottom, there's this little black thing. It's a black rubber O-ring. Smart that they did this, and here's why. So when you thread on your button, you thread it all the way down, and it bottoms out against that rubber O-ring. And what happens is that rubber O-ring pushes back up against the shutter release, putting tension on it, which prevents it from loosening up. Great idea. Great. Simple way to solve the problem of it coming loose and just falling off your camera. Um, so why? What's the purpose of this? Um, for me, aside from aesthetics, because it's kind of cool to at least accessorize your cameras, um, it actually serves a purpose. I have crappy form. I admit it. You know, I need like a rehab for this stuff. I suck at holding super steady. That's why the five axis image stabilization is the bomb for me. But um, it's a. I guess the analogy that I would use for people who are familiar with like shooting guns is that you don't want to pull hard on the trigger. You don't want to jerk your finger on the trigger because it takes your aim off. It's the same with shooting a camera. You don't want to like hit the button because it'll move the camera or you're more likely to move. You want to be nice and smooth and deliberate with your press and you want to, you know, slowly go through the motion to release the shutter. This increases the sensitivity of of your shutter as far as like the amount of force that it takes for you to actuate the shutter. So when I'm shooting, you know, I get the camera up and I'm tucked in nice and tight, you know, doing the best I can to hold still. And it takes very little pressure pushing on this button for me to actually do the half shutter press and get focus lock and to finish pushing the rest of the way down and releasing the shutter. It's actually so sensitive that I've let people try this out. And as soon as they start touching the button, it's like, click, click, click. And they're like, whoa, holy cow. Like, I didn't even hardly touch it. And I'm like, exactly. That's why I do this. So that it's one more way for me to um, minimize the amount that I'm going to move the camera. And so this is the Low Lumina Mini. And this is the 10 millimeter. There we go. It's the 10 millimeter diameter button, uh, which is, in my mind, perfect size for the Olympus cameras, the OMD cameras. I've got one on this EM1 and I've got one on my EM5 and I'm going to order two more of these for other cameras that I've got. Uh, and I'll probably order them in different colors because you can get them in green, which is totally cool. You know, I, green eyes, green button. Um, you can get it in red, silver, yellow, black, yeah, I think that's it. So, uh, again, just like everything else, there will be a link to it in the the show notes. Oh, and I should talk about prices, too, because I'm always talking about stuff and never mention prices. So the B-Grip Uno, uh, their U.S. distributor offers free shipping, which is the bomb. And the cost of this is like $54.99. So for like $55, bucks, which I think puts it about $20 less than the Peak Design. And I don't want to sound like I'm not in Peak Design because their product is – Incredibly awesome, but this just uh, seems to work a lot better for me. So, fifty-five bucks for the B Grip Uno, and these um, the Low Lumina Minis. It's twelve bucks for this little kit, and it comes with two different of these little bases. It's got a flat base, which I'm not sure. Um, so, I guess maybe like the flat base, you could put it on a tuft because the the shutter button is flat. But on the OMDs, the shutter release button is domed. So the the base that they give you, they give you a flat base, and they give you one that is um, concave. So it actually hugs the shape of your shutter, which is cool. Um, I like that. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to look and see if you can order different uh, buttons just in case it ever came off, which so far it hasn't, and I've been bumping it in my bag and stuff, so it's holding on pretty solid. 
Next thing I want to talk about, again, another accessory, is uh, straps. Love straps. I'm a strap guy, in case you can't tell. So, like, I've got this custom deal right here that my brother braided up for me out of paracord. Got the whole Rasta going here. Um, my EM5 back here in my Think Tank bag has a wicked strap from Tap and Die. Big fan of theirs. I'm always promoting them. But I've done reviews of a, a couple of products from Cecilia Gallery. They're another New York-based uh, product manufacturer that does camera straps. And like the Tap and Die products, these are all handcrafted and beautiful. So this one, uh, I was they sent this to me to review. And they sent it because this is a narrower uh, strap design. It's not quite as thick as a lot of the other products out there. So it's in my mind, kind of tailored for the Micro Four Thirds products. And this one, let me pull up their page here. So this is a two and a half centimeter brown leather neck strap. So that's the, the width of this part right here is two and a half centimeters. Uh, it's Argentinian cowhide. It's all hand stitched. It's phenomenal. What I like about it, though, is that when you get into something like this where it's handcrafted and people have actually put the the, the time and effort into crafting a product like this, it, it shows through in all the details. A lot of camera straps end up making a lot of the hardware out of plastic. This is not plastic. This is metal. Uh, this is metal as well, and it's even embossed with their name, Cecilia. And like any good camera ma uh, strap manufacturer, they add these little bumpers here. So what these do, for those who aren't sure... This is a little protector to keep this split ring from rubbing on your camera body and scuffing it up. It's a nice little touch, you know, having this little leather tab here. Uh, again, big fan of Cecilia Gallery as well. I love the smell of leather. <laughs> so it's cool to get a product from them like that. And, uh, and I don't, I'm not hard on my gear, but I definitely don't like, super baby things like this you know so that's kind of why i like leather it holds up really well it wears well it i think the longer you own it the better it gets uh it's 68 bucks for the strap i'm not sure what they charge for shipping but it's worth every single penny of the 68 dollars. and i can show you another one of their straps as well while i'm talking about cecilia gallery because i am a big fan of what they make so this is like the first strap that i reviewed for them and i always wanted one of these so badly uh, and now I've got one. It's a great strap. And the reason I wanted it is because I didn't I didn't get my start in film. Okay, I'm not a film photographer from back in the day. I'm old enough to be probably, but uh, when I see pictures of people using the cameras back in like the 80s and 70s or whatever, they all had these really cool like woven, I don't know, psychedelic hippie headband straps. I don't know what you call them, but anyways... Uh, Cecilia Gallery reached out to me and said, hey, we've got these awesome alpaca wool straps, you know, would you be interested in checking one out? And I was like, sure, yeah, let me see what they look like. And I got on their site and I'm like, that's exactly that kind of cool retro look that I always wanted in a strap. I had shopped at thrift stores hoping to come across one, you know, that was like authentic, you know. And when they said, hey, we've got this strap, I thought, Psh, yeah, I'll check it out. Definitely. Very cool. Very cool strap. So... I'm familiar with their products, been using them for a couple of years now, and highly, highly, highly recommend them. And like I said, $68 for something uh, that is built like this. So it's not just that it's a leather strap. So there's actually nylon webbing that it interfaces with in here. So it's a lot stronger than it would be if it were just leather. And the strap is padded as well on the side. Um, I'm not sure what they do to, to the leather, but it feels a lot softer on the side that goes against your neck. Uh, maybe it's just because it's breaking in and I've been wearing it a lot. I don't know. So I guess those are pretty much the products that I wanted to talk about tonight. They're just accessories, you know. It's not like I'm recommending, you know, $1,000 lens or, you know, $900 camera body because you know I already am going to recommend those to you anyways. But I know that... It's cool to be able to add something to your to your photography bag, to your gear, to uh, to accessorize things, dress them up, make your stuff a little different, make it unique, because that's what we are. You know, we're all individuals. It's cool to have your stuff stand out a little bit. Um, so I guess that's it. You know, I'm at the 35 minute mark here, and before I go, I just want to uh, say thanks again to Mike for 
for swinging in here for a few minutes and filling some space for me. And to thank everybody who's been watching, the next episode is one year of doing this. I'm so freaking excited about that. You know, we're going to do some giveaways, uh, trying to line up some other things aside from the, the Uno uh, B grip. But uh, yeah, thanks you guys for watching. You know, it's, it's exciting to see the viewer counts on the videos after they post. Uh, it's why we do this, you know, and I've got to meet a lot of cool people from doing this. You know, we've had people come to our workshops that started off and, you know, watching us to learn about, you know, who we were to meet up with us, you know, and when I was in Chicago this summer at the out of Chicago conference, I had at least a dozen people come up. Oh man, I watch your show every week. You know, I love you. You know what you guys are doing. That's awesome. You know, I've learned about this from you guys or that. And it just uh, totally floored. <laughs> I'm not going to get choked up. I'm not going to cry. I promise. But it's, it's really cool, you know, and we appreciate, you know, that you guys watch us. So, uh, Tune in in two weeks. We'll have some giveaways. We'll talk about some more upcoming events. Uh, oh, upcoming events. Next weekend, not this upcoming one, but the 22nd of this month, I'll be in Ann Arbor, Michigan at the Camera Mall doing a presentation uh, on taking advantage of available time to shoot. You know, I kind of title it being the commuter shooter, but I'll talk about a little bit more than just uh, taking photos to and from on your drive. And I'll talk about taking advantage of that one hour or 30 minute lunch break that you might get to, to capture some fun images. And then after the presentation's done, we're going to head out and just do some street photography. We're just going to walk around Ann Arbor. It's a really cool town. So if you get a chance, uh, swing out to Ann Arbor, uh, look up the camera mall on Google. Actually, I'll put a link to it on the show notes so you can click there. But, uh, if you're around Michigan, come see me on August 22nd. And if you're not in Michigan on August 22nd, come on August 29th to Muskegon. And I'm going to be doing a macro photography workshop there for the camera shop of Muskegon. And both of these events are Olympus events too. So if you're curious about Olympus cameras, come to these events. There is going to be equipment that you can take for a test drive while you're there. And of course, I'll be able to work with you on using that equipment if you go. Um, but August 29th at the camera shop of Muskegon, Macro photography, I'll get you going from having never shot a macro to just taking some mind-bendingly cool photos of bugs and flowers and just things you find on the beach or in your kitchen, whatever. Uh, so come on out and check us out. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you guys on the one-year mark. Take care. Bye.